Hi, my name is Mike Phillips. I own Phillips Automotive and Performance in Downingtown, Pennsylvania. I operate two shops here at our facility. Phillips Automotive is a full service repair shop where we take care of all your daily driver's needs. From oil changes and brake jobs to full engine and transmission rebuilds. Phillips Performance is our custom hot rod and speed shop where we hand make custom hot rods, rat rods, full tube chassis race cars, muscle cars, perform full restoration and metalwork services, as well as design, engineer, and fabricate just about anything you can imagine from custom stainless steel headers to custom suspension parts and handmade aluminum bodies. Today I'm going to teach you about our exhaust bender, the Bailey EB300. The EB300 is a great machine no matter what kind of shop you operate. For our repair shop, we save our customers lots of money by fabricating flex pipes when it would include a catalytic converter which would cost the customer a lot of money. Now we can keep that in-house, save the customer hundreds of dollars and keep that money for the shop's profit. The other shops in town also send us their work instead of sending it to the big chain exhaust shops which charge much more money and perform lower quality work. Our custom shop benefits from having this machine because the cars we build we can keep all those exhaust systems in-house instead of sending it out ourselves. When you first receive your Bailey EB300 and pull it out of the crate, you will have to make a few minor adjustments depending on the temperature and climate of the area you work in. The two main adjustments you're going to have to adjust are the speed valve and the pressure valve. This will change depending on the temperature of your environment. When you first receive your Bailey EB300 exhaust bender, you should read the entire manual cover to cover. You will find detailed instructions on these adjustments on page 11 under periodic maintenance. Another thing you're going to want to check before you turn your machine on is that the hydraulic fluid level is full. You can find that in the sight glass shown right here. If you need to add, you fill it right here. It's very important that you use the right type of material for making exhaust. You have to buy AK bendable steel pipe to make exhaust systems with. This can be found at all your local auto parts stores. Once you have selected the size of the exhaust pipe you're going to make the exhaust system with, you have to pull out the correct tooling to make that bend. You can reference the chart on the side of the machine shown here. It has the pipe outside diameter labeled with color. You match that with the colors on the dies and the die followers. The EB300 is capable of bending up to three inch exhaust. For this demonstration we'll make a few bends using two and a quarter which on the chart is the orange dies. We've selected the orange bending die and pulled out the orange followers. You'll notice there's two large followers and one half follower. They also are referred to as shoes. This would be a half shoe. You use the half shoe when you have to make two adjacent bends opposite of each other and you can't physically fit it in the machine because the other shoe is too large. You can use the half shoe, and I'll show you another trick later on in the video. Once you have selected the proper die, you locate the die by dropping it on and just sliding it in. It will then be held in place by the keeper, and it will stay there. The shoes are pinned, and there's holes for easy alignment. You will have a left and a right. You can't put them in the wrong spot. Slide them in place. Now it's time to get some pipe. When you're ready to turn the machine on, first thing you do is twist the knob and then push the green power button. To turn it off, it has a safety. Just hit the knob in and it will shut everything down. Moving the bending die in and out will be done by operating the pressure valve with a knee switch located on the face of the machine. When you're ready to make a bend, you will mark 
the center line of your bend on the pipe. You'll then locate this in the machine with your center line directly between the two shoes. When you're ready to make the bend, turn the machine on and hit the knee switch to move the die into the pipe. As soon as the pipe is snug in the die, remove your hands from the working area of the machine and continue with your die until the desired angle, which can be found on the angle finder on the side of the machine. Next I'll show you an operation where you might use the half shoe, such as making an axle pipe, where you immediately need to make an adjacent bend in the opposite direction of this large bend you just made. When using any exhaust bender, it's always important to keep an open mind and be creative, finding new ways to make the bends happen. Sometimes you can't make the bend fit back in the machine because there's another bend that's too close. You can space the pipe off with a block of wood or the supplied shims that come with the machine, one for the full shoe and one for the half shoe. This will space the shoes off the machine to prevent the machine from hitting the adjacent bend while performing the next bend. You'll see by using the half shoe along with the spacers and a block of wood to protect the pipe, we're able to make a very tight S-turn without damaging the pipe at all. It's also possible to make very large full U-bends in this machine by simply shifting the pipe in the die as you bend it. It will not deform the pipe and you can get a full U in one bend, such as an axle pipe on most of the older solid axle cars. As you see, you can get a very tight radius bend at a high degree with very mild deformation of the pipe itself. Another great use for the half shoe and the block of wood is if you have to make a turn that's 90 degrees in the opposite direction of another turn in close proximity to that turn. By using the bending dies in that manner, you can perform a bend such as this and only create a small dimple on the back side of the pipe from where the half shoe pushed into the pipe during the bend. Mild deformation during a bend like this is 100% normal. A quick tip on figuring out the radius of your bend when you have no existing exhaust system to go off of is using TIG wire or a coat hanger straightened. Bend this wire exactly how you want the pipe to lay and then make your bend to match this. When you bend the wire, 
Bend it at a sharp corner such as this. Don't make sweeping curves. I'll demonstrate why now. Next, I'll show you how to use the stretching function of the machine. This is when you need to slip a pipe over the outside of another pipe for either clamping or welding. Look at the chart on the side of the machine, look at your pipe size, and the desired inside diameter. The decal will tell you which tooling to use. I will demonstrate how to make the two and a quarter pipe that we just bent slip over another piece of two and a quarter pipe. According to the chart on the side of the machine, to make a two and a quarter inside diameter pipe, we want to use the black die, which is indicated by the color on the back side, and use the larger of the two tips on the end of the anvil. For our desired inside diameter, the chart says to spin the dial till number 6 appears in the window. The in and out function of the stretching die is controlled by the handle on the end of the machine. You can pull the handle up or down to make the anvil go in or out. Another function of the stretching machine is to return the pipe to its original outside diameter if you have to cut the pipe in the middle of a bend so you can get another slip fit in that area and get a tight weld. When making slip fits in the two smallest size pipe this machine is capable of, such as inch and a half and inch and three quarters, you'll use the back side of the stretching tool known as the swaging tool. The tool is supplied with two dies labeled one for inch and a half, one for inch and three quarters. I'll show you how to operate that. Next, you'll select the correct clamping set to hold the pipe in the machine. They're labeled as two halves. For this, we're doing inch and three quarter. For filming this video, we're going to perform these operations with the guard open so the camera can focus on the work. Anytime you're performing these operations, you should always do them with the guards closed. You can also make male and female ball sockets with this machine. To make the female ball socket, select the appropriate die to make the male side of the socket, you require two dies. First, you run the correct size in, you run it into the second line. You extract that tool, you close that by installing this on the end of that die, 
and gently working this into the end of the pipe to close in the male side of the ball socket. You can also produce a 45 degree flare and a flat flare by using both sides of this die and this adapter. I'll show you that now. At Phillips Automotive, we have found the EB300 to be very profitable. We use it almost daily in our repair shop and have found most of our hot rod shop customers prefer having a steel bent exhaust system on the cars that they drive which are not trailer queens. I hope you found this video very helpful for specific details and specifications on the machine and other metalworking machines, please contact Bailey Industrial.